Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call forth our daily bread? Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now you see, having made this demand, listen to me, whatever need that will show up today, remember this request and demand you have made to the Lord. And that's how you keep your mind. You remember he says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. I've asked the Lord, for today's bread and I know he's going to supply oh they, they, you have to pay this bill today I've asked the Lord for today's bread and I know he's going to supply now that's what's going through your mind father I asked you for bread and I, I need it before 4 p.m. I need to sort out this thing before 4 p.m. Lord you know if you don't supply there's nothing I can do now that's what's working in your mind that's because you believe the prayer you have just prayed. You believed it. Many people pray and then they don't believe. But the principles of faith is you must believe that those things which you say will come to pass. What does that mean? When I pray to God, he will answer me. If I will just open my mouth and pray to the Lord, he will answer me and I'm going to see results. That's how it works. Those things which he says will come to pass. And that's how you live with the Lord. Now we are talking about being fruitful and being productive. And our team scripture is Colossians chapter 1. We are still in verse 10. Praise God. I'll take it again and let's see how the Lord will help us today. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him. Fully pleasing Him. We don't seem to go beyond this part. Fully pleasing Him. Fully, fully. Fully pleasing him. Oh, I please the Lord this year. I gave God the biggest offering. It doesn't mean he is pleased. Did he ask for it? Don't rush in your emotions to do things. Now, there are times out of our joy for Maybe a deliverance the Lord have done or a blessing the Lord have blessed us with. Out of that joy, we may give him an offering. Now that will please him because you are giving him a thanksgiving offering. That's what you wield in your heart. And say, Lord, I'm going to give you this because I'm so excited. I thank you because it's, why is it big? Because it's also a demonstration of trust in him. See that now? So, but then, you don't just wake up and say, I know what to do. I'm going to sow a seed. Before you take that action, say, Lord, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about this? See that now? Fully pleasing Him. Because some people think, oh, I've done some wrong. I know what to do. I'll give God an offering and He'll wipe away that wrong. Come on now. That's not fully pleasing him. That's treating him like who he's not. That's exactly what you're doing. Treating him like who he's not. He doesn't take bribes. But that's what you're doing. You know, it's not bribe, it's a seed. Now it's bribe. Because you think in your mind, by that money, 
you will get your sins wiped out. It's bright. The same thing people do. You know, many things you, you see, you see an anointed man of God and you say, I know what to do. I'm going to sow a dangerous seed into his life and I'm going to tap into that anointing in his life. It, especially in the Pentecostal, uh, Pentecostal, amongst Pentecostals. It is a common thing right now, but it's wrong. It's wrong. You remember that's what Simon wanted to do to Peter and John. When he saw them, that on anyone they laid their hands on, there is a manifestation. The Holy Ghost comes upon them and they begin to speak in other tongues. He said, wow, I love this gift. Wow, I've never seen this before. I've been here with Philip for how many years now? We didn't see this type of manifestation. Man, you guys are so anointed. And then the Bible said he took money and went to them and said, hey, Give me this gift. And Peter looked at him and said, Your money perish with you. You don't do that. And Peter went further to tell him that you have no part in this business. That's some strong words. You have no part in this. So, but we do it today. I'm going to tap into that anointing with my seed. I don't know who taught us those things. What's supposed to be the right thing to do? Ask the giver of the gift. Lord, I saw this person manifest in this gift and I like it. Lord, talk to me about it. Now, that's what you do. Now, if the Lord now commands you, take an offering and sow into his life. Now, that's the command of the Lord. When you do that, then you are fully pleasing him in that area. Now, I'll tell you this truth. Now, there was a but, but I know people who sowed seeds and, and I, I, I began to see that anointing work in their lives. I'll tell you, it is so easy to contact the anointing with a seed, but it is you don't contact the character of that anointing with a seed. You see, you see the anointing walking, but you don't realize that there are pillars that are holding that anointing. And that's why that man, you see, he's stable and is yet carrying that anointing. Now, if you don't, and, and that, those pillars took years of walking with the Lord to build. That's why he's having stability in what he's doing. Now, you look at that walking and you think oh i want that thing that is working i want that anointing and then you contract it with a seed it will come but it may end up destroying you you will walk in it until the day you are going to meet that demon that will say paul i know jesus i know who are you and that's the day your destruction will begin. Now, not because God wants to destroy you, but because the pillar that supports that anointing have not been built in you. Gifts can be transferred by laying on of hands. It doesn't mean the character is transferred. The character is only gotten by personal work, personal development in your work with the Lord. So if that is not there, I'm telling you the truth, you will destroy yourself. That's why Jesus said, on that day many will come. And they will say they did many mighty works in my name. And I'll tell them, depart from me, because I never knew you. But how come they did those many works in his name? In his name, not in their own name, not in the name of one Babalawo, no, in his name, in the name of Jesus. So they were preachers of Jesus, but yet Jesus said, I never knew you. Why would he say I never knew you? Because I, I never knew you in our, in our meeting place. We never had a meeting place. We never had fellowship. That's why he said, I never, I, I didn't know you, praise God. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. So we told him, we, he says, fully pleasing him. And the only way you can fully please him 
is when you know, pay attention to knowing his mind concerning everything that you're involved with, every decision you want to take. It doesn't take time. It's as simple as, Lord, what do you think about this matter? As a preacher, people will come to you for counsel. No matter how wise you think you are, never judge two similar cases with the same principle. The best thing you can do for every situation that is brought before you, Lord, what's your mind concerning it? How do I go about this situation? How do I answer this particular issue? You must be smart in that area. And that's how you know that you have spoken the mind of God for that particular issue. Don't be too quick to answer, oh, ah, I know where you're going, I know where you're going, I know where you're going. Now, there are times, even before the person speaks, the Lord has told you what to say. But now, you can choose to, like, keep quiet, don't say anything. This is what you should do, this is what you should do, this is what... You remember Naaman, Naaman went to Elijah, Elisha, and he got there. Sir! The Syrian general wants to see you. Tell him to go and wash seven times in the river of Jordan and he will be well. Now that's because the Lord had told him what to do. Now we never read before then that anybody got healed by washing in that same river. See that now? So the Lord already told him. So he just felt there's no need even saying the man. The Lord has told me what to do. The Lord didn't tell me to collect an offering from him. The Lord didn't tell me to have an interaction with him. As I heard the man was coming, I heard the Lord say, this is the solution to his issue. Now that was a straightforward issue. That was, that was a body that needed healing. So there is no word of counseling that was going to solve or help in that area. He wants healing. See that now? Now, there are other times when, you, when you're dealing with emotional issues, when you're dealing with um, issues that people have been going through, not physically now, and even though the Lord have told you what the answer is, now you have to allow them express themselves and listen to them. But then never be swayed by what they are telling you to forget what the Lord have told you. Because sometimes if you begin to look at the issues as they are explaining it to you, your mind might just change from what God commanded you to say. But then it is important also that you let them speak. Not in all cases. In cases that have to deal with emotions, in cases, in cases that have to deal with... Uh, you know, when people have gone through, because see, when you tell them, this is what God will have you do, that should always even come last. Now you can help them, because God will not bring people to you that you really cannot help, even though that help will be by his anointing. You see that now? But then there is something about your own wisdom that you have acquired from the Lord that can become a supporting pillar in that person's life. So you start from there and begin to cancel them. And when you are done setting the foundation, then you hit and say, now this is what you are going to do. You see that now? Now why? Because when they set their mind to do that thing, if Satan comes to tempt them, that counsel, that wisdom that you give as a supporting pillar, that is when it will speak, when they are tempted. Every other scripture, now God may have said, tell him to do one, two, three things. Thank you, Lord. As you reason those three things, you say, oh, this scripture, this scripture, this scripture deals with this. Now, those are supporting pillars that you give. Because we know that there is Satan out there. When they go to do the will of God, Satan will want to speak to them. 
Now, if their hearts are not strong or resolved enough, they may be swayed by the things Satan is going to say. But when that time comes, then they will remember, but no, 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 no. This is what the Lord... Now, the reason the serpent was able to sweep Eve off her feet were two reasons. Number one, Adam didn't give us sufficient knowledge concerning that tree. He had it. He didn't communicate it to her the way God communicated it to him. So Adam knew exactly what that tree represented. He knew what eating from that tree was going to do. He knew. And he didn't sufficiently inform his wife as God told him. He just told her, see that tree, don't even go there. You know, we, we, we act that way sometimes. You, you know how this thing works. You know how deadly this thing can be. And, but then you know the technicalities. You know you can actually walk close to that thing and touch one or two things. And, and you know how to keep yourself safe. But you know this thing is deadly. So another person said, don't go near that thing. As though, as the person is coming very close to it, the, the air around the place will just envelop the person and, and, and kill the person. That's how you don't even go near that thing. The day I see you go near that thing, you'll be finished. And so now you create this fear, right? But one day, the person sees someone else go near, or even you, you go near, you touch some things. He doesn't know what you're touching. But he sees that you go near. And then, now, it's so easy for Satan to begin to deceive that person because of the lack of sufficient knowledge. He said, you see that thing doesn't really kill like they said. You just need to know what to touch. Now, he can't ask you because you've been saying, don't go near. So then, the person wants to explore himself and they get into trouble at the end of the day. That's, that's what Satan did to Eve. So Eve will see Adam dress this tree, touch it, and you know they will be doing every other work together. When it comes to that, say, Eve, stay away, stay, stay away. So it was easy for Satan to say, did you think God really, really said you should not eat of this tree? He said, no, oh, ah, God said we should not even touch it. Hmm. Can't you see your husband is touching this? Did he die? Come on, be wise. There is something that God is hiding from you. Now, this is exactly how it works. So that's why, as, as, a, as a pastor, as a minister, you guide people properly. You, you teach them. You teach them. Even when God has given you the instruction on what to do, you teach them. Now, knowing in what situation you apply what, now that's the wisdom of God that you should possess. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. All this is gearing towards being fruitful. Because you see, if you don't produce exactly what God wants you to produce in every situation, then you're not fruitful. It's not everything that requires prayers. Sometimes, many times, you need wisdom before you even pray. Wisdom to even know how to pray. So that's the reason in line with the scriptures it says fully pleasing him. You want to ask the mind of God concerning everything, even in your prayer. You want to pray about something, the best prayer, the first prayer point you should pray is, Lord, how do I pray about this issue? Lord, I, I want to pray for my finances. How do I pray about it? What should I say? Lord, I've not had money in a while. I don't know what to do. How do I pray about this, Lord? Jesus said the Holy Ghost will teach you. He will teach you how to pray. He will teach you everything. Everything. He, everything. He will teach you. He will teach you how to make money. He will teach you what to do. He will teach you everything. 
Sinanda. I remember a few days ago, I, I was at the bank to do um, some transactions. So, just a simple transaction. So, I, I was getting to the counter and there was a short queue. And while I was getting there, this lady, I saw her when she came and she was asking someone else, are you the last person? And the person said, oh, no, uh, the, there's someone behind me and he's over there. So she went to the person. I said, oh, I'm behind you. Now I was there, walking to the queue while all these things were going on. So I got and I stood on that queue. And she didn't come to the queue. She waited until when it was just one person to me. And then she walked in and said, I'm behind this person. And I smiled and I said, but I was here before you. She said, no. I said, I, I said, I heard you when you were asking this person. And then she turned to me and said, then you should have said you're the last person. So I smiled and kept going. I said, it's okay. You can, you can stay. So she stood there. You know, normally you want to like, I mean, why would she talk to me like that? I just smiled and said, it's okay, you can stay. And then, one of the cashiers became free. Someone behind me now went to her and tapped her and said, that cashier is free. Go to that cashier. And she walked out of my front and went to that cashier. The moment she walked out of my front and got to that cashier's front, the cashier standing right in front of me became free and said, sir, please come. So I went straight to the cashier and presented my name. And then that cashier, the lady went to, and I said, sorry, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Go back to the queue. Oh, dear Lord, I held myself from laughing. <laughs> I, I said in my mind, I said, dear Lord, these angels that are working with me, they, they have a sense of humor. Praise <laughs> God. I just kept quiet. You know, she, she, she turned and she looked at me and, you know, wondering, okay, what, what do I do next? I just kept a straight face. <laughs> Praise God. Now, you see, I refuse to get into strife. And God took care of the situation. Now, some other person would have said, no way, you can't, I, I must teach you. No, I, I, no, come on now. See that now? Fully pleasing him. Now, I know there is no way the Lord will watch me get into strife with, with that kind of a situation or any situation. I have already been taught by the Lord, avoid strife by all means. So you want to strive? No, please, enjoy, have it. See, why do I say have it? Because I know there is a judge, and he's a good judge. He's a good judge. He's not going to judge according to who shouts the loudest. He's going to judge according to truth, praise God. <laughs> My time is up today. Woo! I pray for you today. That the Lord will show full mercy in your life and bring you to the place of truth and help you to please Him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.